All right, welcome back, my friends, to another Luminous Mysteries. My name is Tom, and this is April 25th, 2022. So I'm going to skip reading the daily and the gospel readings because um, my friend said it's a little, little long and a little hard to get through. So let's just jump right into uh, the reflection. I want to state this first because I don't think it was maybe quite clear, but I want to be abundantly clear. It is important to state that I am not at all saying that these events did not happen. They did happen. However, just as the life of Jesus was foretold in the inner meanings of the scriptures, it is also this also has inner meaning. The inner meaning is our roadmap and guide because my reflection today is uh, strictly on the gospel message. It would have been way too long if I added the the other uh, the other stuff. So let's jump in. The eleven were gathered, hiding together. Jesus appeared to them. In this line, we can look at Jesus being God's love in action in His divine human form. So God's love in action came to the eleven and said to them. Go into the world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Every creature seems like an odd thing to say, and at this time there was no written gospel. We can look at this in the form of a human body, meaning this. The church is described as the body of Christ, and a group of people are also described and said to be a body, like a body of people, a gathering. The eleven were gathered in the upper room after they had lost our Lord. <laughs> this is also where our Lord ap appeared to them several times, might I ask. From this, we can gather that the upper room is our inner being, the tabernacle of our heart. The good teachings of the Lord were gathered in this tabernacle, our body being a group of people. The divine love in action calls to these men these good teachings, the, represent, the representation of his divinely good and true teachings. To go out into the world and preach the gospel to all creatures. The world is the outer self, and the creatures are the good ideas, actions, and thoughts of the outer self that spring forth from the inner self. The gospel is the divine truth and the divine goodness that our Lord Jesus brings to us. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. <laughs> to be baptized, a person is bathed in holy water. Holy water is water that has been blessed by a deacon or a priest. This blessing carried the intent to turn the essence of the water into something else. That something else is or to become a symbol of divine truth. When we walk into the church, we dip our finger into the holy water and we make the sign of a cross. We are making an outward gesture of placing the divine truth on us. First, this is a remembrance of our baptism, and second, to remind ourselves that we are a child of God in the inheritance of receiving and carrying the divine truth and goodness within us with the intent of letting that divine goodness and truth change us into a purified person ready to be received into heaven on our last day. This is the process of our being saved by our baptism. Because we believe. We hold the intent in our hearts and actions. We are saved through the blessing of the waters that contain the divine truth and the bread that contains the divine goodness. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. This seems to go against the divine mercy and love of our Lord. But if we do not believe, we do not place our intent in our baptism. We are the ones rejecting God's love. It is not God who condemns us, but it is our action that causes the condemnation. We turn away from God. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they'll drive out demons. They'll speak new languages. <clears throat> the 
Those who accept the divine truth and the holy waters of baptism will drive out demons. Not like the exorcist movie, which is what comes to mind when I read this. But they will drive out the demons that seek to influence their mind and action. It is through our faith and trust in Jesus that we choose to have heaven's influence us more than hell. This is the process of turning back to God. It is Jesus working in us and through us that allows the Holy Spirit to drive out the darkness and the demons that we inherited by our birth as a human. It is our baptism that is our birth as a child of God. The new languages we start to speak are the languages of love because it is divine love of the Holy Spirit that is working in us. And the more we are changed by the Holy Spirit, the more we speak in a new way. The more we love, we bring into the world. Because speaking is making a thought into energy with the use of your voice. We speak love into the world. And it was the Holy Spirit that was the prime mover of the loving thought. And our cooperation that brought that thought into existence through our voice, language. We will pick up serpents with their hands and they will drink any deadly thing. or And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. Serpent in this carries the same meaning as the serpent in the Garden of Eden. It is that evil or false thought that hell uses to sneak its way into our minds. We will pick up these evil and false thoughts with our hands. We will instantly see them for what they are and we'll grab a hold of them as to not let them harm us or influence us in any manner. And, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. If we fall prey to an evil or false thought, it will not harm us. Because of our Lord's mercy and love, we will not be harmed. We are giving the blessing of the sacrament of confession. So when we do not drink a deadly, th- so if we do drink a deadly thing, we are given a grace and mercy to be healed by our Lord's love with our intent to never fall prey to it again. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. We will grasp the sick parts of our inner self through the love of Jesus. Those parts will be healed. This is our battles with our temptations, and when we battle them, we grasp them. We hold them in our hands. We hold them in our mind as we see all the parts of that temptation. We recover because we make the effort to battle. We make the effort to be purified. This is the small part that Jesus needs from us so he can win the battle for us. So, He can save us from our inherited fallen human nature, which has disordered appetites towards falsity and evil. When the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. Then they seen Jesus ascend to the right hand of God. The right hand person in a kingdom was the king's guide who put the action of all the king's commands. Put into action all the king's commands, sorry. We know God is love. This is saying that Jesus, seated at God's right hand, is God's love in action. That action is the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit that comes from God the Father and the Son. All three aspects of one God. Aspects being complete, which is the meaning of being called a person in God. God the Father is complete, God the Son is complete, and God the Holy Spirit is complete. Each complete and all one in one person. But they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord works with them, and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The eleven went forth from their inner self to the outer self and changed every part of the outer self to reflect the beauty of the inner self that was changed by God's love. 
They did this while Jesus was with them. They did this with the love of God in action. And when each change in the outer self happened, it confirmed with the word, with Jesus, through the signs of becoming more loving, humble, and meek. As our first reading from Simon Peter tells us, clothe yourselves in humility in your dealings with one another. The last line from Peter is translated a couple different ways. Another translation, she who is in Babylon, chosen together with you, sends her greetings, and so does my son Mark. In the USCCB translation, it reads, the chosen one of Babylon. This is our Holy Mother Mary, the Queen of the Church. She keeps and protects the divine truth of the Church. And when Peter says, as my son Mark, that means the divine truth watched over by Mary and the divine love as performed by Mark. Send you greetings. They come to you. This is all clarified by the next line. Greet one another with a loving kiss. We speak the divine goodness and truth from our hearts into existence through our mouth. It is with this mouth that the Lord's love enters the world. Our lips, which are the last part of ourselves, to touch the love that comes from within to the outside. We kiss each other with the part of us that brings love into the world. We give each other the love we receive from God. And the last line in our reading from Peter, which is the last line in the first letter of Peter, peace to all of you who are in Christ. So I thank you so much for joining me on this adventure to motivate and help and guide each other into our ultimate goal, and that is sainthood. So I'll leave you with this picture of Jesus with the 11. Um, it's the oldest picture I could find. Then again, I didn't really search that long, but <laughs> time constraints. So I look forward to doing another one of these guys for you guys uh, tomorrow. And I hope to see you there. I love you. Have a good night.